us together and to proudly welcome our chief guest, former president of India, Honorable Sri Janab Mukherjee. A hearty welcome to all to the 5th JKLU Laureate Award Ceremony and Harishankar Singhania Memorial Oration. It is indeed an honor to have with us Sri Pranam Mukherjee, former President of India, as the Chief Guest on the occasion. May I request Sri Bharat Hariji Singhania, Honorable Chancellor JKLU, to extend a floral welcome to Sri Pranam Mukherjee. Before continuing with the proceedings, may I request the dignitaries on the dais to light the ceremonial lamp and invoke blessings of Goddess Saraswati. offer a welcome to this eminent, eminent galaxy of dignitaries and guests, may I request Dr. R. L. Raina, Honorable Vice Chancellor, J.K. Lakshmipat University to deliver the welcome address. Honorable former President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, esteemed Chancellor Sri Bharat Hariji Singhania, Pro Chancellor Dr. Raghupatji Singhania, Pro Vice Chancellor Sri Ashish Gupta, members of the Board of Management, J.K. Lakshmat University, Presidents, Vice Chancellors, Directors, Deans, and Heads of Universities, Institutions, and Professional Bodies in Jaipur, esteemed members of the Civic Society of Jaipur, youth of this capital city of Rajasthan, valued guests, faculty members, officers, staff, scholars, and students of all institutions and J.K. Lakshmat University, friends of J.K. Lakshmat University from media, ladies and gentlemen, namaskar. On behalf of entire J.K. Lakshmat University community, I welcome you all to the fifth J.K. Lakshmat University 
लॉरियट अवार्ड प्रेजेंटेशन सेरेमनी एंड हरिशंकर सिंघानिया मेमोरियल ओरेशन टू बिगिन द प्रोसीडिंग्स आई हैव अ प्लेजेंट ड्यूटी टू परफॉर्म एंड दैट इज टू वेलकम एंड इंट्रोड्यूस श्री प्रणाब मुखर्जी बीइंग एन अचीवर ऑफ द हाईएस्ट लेवल एंड गिवन हिज मल्टीफेसेटेड पर्सनालिटी एंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशंस आई कैन ओनली ट्राई टू मेक अ मॉडेस्ट अटेम्प्ट ऑन दैट largely in the interest of youth of this great nation sitting in the audience a hearty welcome to you once again sir to this most prestigious event of jk lakshmat university sir honorable formal president of india shri pranam gurji a man of humble origins was born in a village of birbhum district of west bengal in a family of freedom fighter he acquired his masters degree in history as well as political science besides a degree in law from the university of kolkata and entered into professional life as an academic and journalist elected to rajya sabha in 1969 shri mukherjee assumed the office of 13th president of india on july 25 2012 after an illustrious political career exceeding 5 decades in exemplary service of the nation Shri Mukherjee has served on the board of governors of the IMF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and Af African Development Bank. And as a prolific reader and scholar, he has authored several books on Indian economy and on nation building. Many awards and honors conferred on him include India's highest, second highest civilian award, Padma Vibhushan, in 2008, the best parliamentarian award. in 1997 and best administrator in india award in 2011 we salute you for your contribution sir <laughs> may i now share with this august audience a brief about our university and its activity mix for the year jk lakshmat university established in 2011 has been offering high quality education in the field of management engineering and technology to meet highest academic standards the course structure for our engineering programs has been thoroughly redesigned similarly pinnacle program mba program has been introduced from this year in its new avatar as the pinnacle mba the essence of our engineering exercise line lies in students number 1 gaining in depth domain knowledge in chosen disciplines supplemented by breadth across other disciplines number 2 enjoying flexibility by learning through interdisciplinary electives from liberal arts and culture delivered by the faculty in the newly established department of science and liberal arts three building their professional competencies through communication critical thinking problem solving four learning new age technologies driving innovation and five learning from the live applications through project based learning and practice schools guidance expanded extended by the board of studies academic advisory board and academic council in all of this is truly acknowledged the university has augmented its faculty resource base with specialization in these areas from overseas as well our university is an active participant of various digital initiatives of the mhrd of government of india like swayam swayam prabha and national academic depository to further our agenda on academic and industry collaboration mou with amsterdam university of applied sciences netherlands and six other academic and corporate bodies were signed during the year we are sir a young university with highly qualified and experienced faculty to further build on the credibility and visibility of the university 87 research papers books case studies were published and presented in national and international conferences seminars in india and abroad student contribution in furthering such a research agenda of the university with their faculty mentors merits a mention five papers received best paper awards in recognition of their academic contributions 10 faculty members were honored with their nomination to various national and state level governing government bodies and professional societies sir i would humbly mention that i received an award visionary edu leader award last year on december 
in New Delhi in a prominent event presided by you. It gives us pleasure to share with you, sir, that JKLU has been selected for establishment of Atal Incubation Center under Niti Aayog's Atal Innovation Mission. JKLU is one of the only two applicants selected from Rajasthan and among three percent education and industry institutions selected across India to establish Atal Incubation Centers. To strengthen the academic and research agenda of the university in focused areas, four centers of excellence, namely Center of Communication and Critical Thinking, Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, Center for Data Sciences, and a Center for Operations Excellence have been established. To keep abreast with and contribute to latest trends and developments in its various domain areas, the university regularly organized and participated in 115 academic and professional events during the year. This included nine sessions with seasoned academic and industry professionals under distinguished lecture series. Major events like the 6th International 5G Conference and an Industry Academia Conclave organized during the year witnessed increased participation and appreciation of all concerned. In recognition of its contributions, the university during the year received five top honors and awards. Over 40 of our students brought laurels to the university by their participation and winning accolades in various academic and professional events. A variety of innovative curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular activities conceived, planned, designed and executed by students themselves through 14 of their clubs under of course faculty mentors with active involvement of the student council enriched student and campus life a great deal. Two flagship events of our students, annual tech management festival Sabran and annual sports meet Sparda 2018 witnessed record participation. With this brief about our university, we once again welcome you all to our all important functions and seek your blessings for its success in achieving a greater stature. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. JK Lakshmipath University, Jaipur, has been set up by the visionaries of JK Group to further the cause of value-based education in this part of the country. To introduce this temple of higher learning to this esteemed audience, may we have the AV, please. Gyanam Amritam. Excellence comes from an urge to strive and deliver the best over time. A mindset that says, when it is good enough, improve it. It is a way of thinking that comes only from the drive within. Padma Bhushan Shri Hari Shankar Singhania, Founder Chancellor of the University. Welcome to JK Lakshmipath University, a unique center of learning inculcating the best values of Indian culture with the best-in-class modern education and confidently striding ahead to become one of the best academic institutions of the country. JK Lakshminpath University has been set up as a unique learning center combining the best of Indian ethos with modern technology. We follow the objective of providing quality education and holistic personality development with a focus on nurturing leadership. Lala Lakshmi Patsinghania, the chief architect of JK organization, considered that education should not just be knowledge of a number of subjects, rather it should be a meaningful education for life. The university is supported by the renowned JK organization. At par with the best in the world, JK organization is known for the quality of its products, admirable corporate governance, excellence in management practices and its visionary social and educational initiatives. J.K. Lakshmipath University is poised to be at the forefront of learning, teaching and research in the fields of management and various branches of engineering with a global perspective. We at J.K.L.U. should always encourage innovation and follow a mentoring-based education system the university provides a globally enriched platform to develop its students into leaders of tomorrow 
through industry-relevant, future-ready and actionable learning outcomes. At our university, we are committed to prepare our students to excel in their chosen fields of interest by helping them recognize and realize their true potential. All of this is being taken care of by the university by bringing in and building on the element of quality in all the three critical components which are the input, the processes and the output. The Institute of Management has been established to develop business leaders who will be capable of meeting the challenges of the corporate world. It offers world-class education in all major areas of management with the right blend of conceptual inputs and practical exposure and leading them to highly promising careers. Students' growth is the mission of the Institute of Management. The mantras of IAM success are commitment, care, control, as well as honesty, humility and high standards of performance. The Institute of Engineering and Technology is the high-tech constituent of J.K. Lakshmipat University. It has been established to nurture budding professionals into new age technocrats. It is focused on activity-rich education with maximum emphasis on practical working to prepare well-groomed, tailor-made engineering graduates who are industry deployable. To ensure the practical aspect of learning, the Institute of Engineering and Technology has advanced laboratories. These labs are supported with physical research and state-of-the-art facilities, both in terms of hardware and software. Equipped with the latest interactive learning tools, they help our students validate concepts and try out new ideas, giving wings to innovation and creativity. From fundamental theorems to exciting applications like robotics, re-engineering and analytical tools for automobiles, refrigeration, wind and solar energy, students get a first-hand exposure and experience. At every step, our faculty is there to hold their hand, monitor, guide, encourage and assist our students. The idea is to give them a lab exposure at par with the best in the country. The Institute is all set to become one of the most sought-after engineering and technology hubs of the country. The centrally air-conditioned classrooms have the latest aids for teaching, along with internet connectivity, to facilitate effective learning. They are designed to encourage interaction between the faculty and the students. The University has a distinct focus on research. More than 500 research papers, including books and monographs, have been published by the faculty. In addition, significant number of students are pursuing PhD program at the university, both in management and engineering. The Learning Resource Center, which is the library of the university, occupies an iconic multi-storied building and houses a growing number of books, journals and reading material in the fields of management, engineering and allied subjects. It has a section dedicated to e-library as well. JKLU offers the rigors of good education and holistic learning with a focus on depth of learning, innovative professionalism and all-round personality development to create candidates ideally suited for a promising career in their chosen field. The university provides separate hostel accommodation for boys and girls. The hostel rooms are spacious and well furnished. The hostels have Wi-Fi internet connectivity and provide all the modern amenities for a comfortable stay. The university has a well equipped health center with a full time nursing staff and a doctor on call. The university also has a bank with ATM facility. At JKLU, students are trained to lead a well-balanced holistic life. There are excellent facilities for different kinds of sports and the students are encouraged to participate in the contests at the university, regional and national level. Beyond the curriculum, 
JKLU is actively focused on creating an environment for the multifaceted and holistic development of its students. Throughout the academic year, there are conferences, workshops, seminars, and industry interactions that provide the perfect platform for young minds to take the leap into the extraordinary. Enthusiastically organized extracurricular activities let our students showcase their talents and soak in the applause they deserve. Building competence, confidence, and emotional intelligence to succeed in every walk of life. The Institution of JKLU Laureate Award and Hari Shankar Singhania Memorial Oration. The placement cell in the university is in constant touch with the industry and invites reputed companies for campus recruitment. The placement cell provides the students with information and advice as they determine their career objectives and start to explore employment opportunities. I'm proud to have studied at a place like JKLU. My alma mater gave me brilliant education and confidence to compete anywhere in my career. Thank you, JKLU. The industry-facing curriculum of my university has made me ready for workplace challenges. My present company has opened a new line of opportunities for me to explore my career. The university has given me the right launchpad for my career. In my time here, I learned how to deal with things professionally, which is now helping me advance at my workplace. My practice school too has been the gateway for me in the corporate world. The theoretical knowledge I gained at college, I implemented practically there, and I continue to utilize that knowledge at my workplace with success. My university has helped me use knowledge in a different way. Now, that creative way of thinking helps me work with my organization, Mahindra Finance, and contribute every day. The learning and the environment provided by the university gave me a chance to work with Vodafone. It also helped me to prepare for the real corporate challenge. In a short span, the university has earned the name across the country and has won a number of prestigious awards, which stand testimony to the quality of education at this extraordinary center of excellence. Welcome to innovative thinking, self-discipline, unbounded enthusiasm, creative enlightenment. Welcome to a place that redefines the boundaries of excellence and inspires us to excel in everything we do. J.K. Lakshmipath University. Education for life. Thank you very much. I now invite our Honorable Chancellor, Shri Bharat Hariji Singhania, to welcome and brief the audience about the award and Hari Shankar Singhania Memorial Oration. Shri Pranam Mukherjee, members of the Board of Management of the Lakshmipath University, prominent members of the Civic Society of Jaipur, youth of this capital city of Jaipur, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. A very good afternoon and welcome to you one and all. It gives me immense pleasure to address you all on this momentous occasion of the fifth JKLU Laureate Award ceremony and Harishankar Singhania Memorial Oration. A very warm, warm welcome and thanks to former President of India, Padma Vibhushan, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, who despite his hectic schedule, has, was kind enough to accept our invitation and be here with us today to receive the award and deliver the fifth Harishankar Singhania Memorial Oration. Sri Mukherjee honor, on, honored with the best parliamentarian award in 1997 is recognized thinker, a notable economist, established author, and above all, a great son of India. Born in 1935 in West Bengal, Shri Mukherjee occupied several ministerial portfolios in the government of India. He was described as the best finance minister of the world by Euro Money magazine 
and finance minister of the year for Asia by emerging markets while he was the finance minister of the country. Thereafter, Sri Mukherjee achieved the apex position as the 13th president of India from 2012 to 2017. It is an apt coincidence that while the nation has yesterday celebrated the 150th birth anniversary of the father of nation, we are today honoring a true Gandhian who has rendered service to his, of his, for his lifetime in the cause of the country and its secular contribution. In the words of Pranam Mukherjee himself, I quote, I quote, the fact remains that secularism is inherent in the Indian system, in the Indian ethos and culture. India cannot but be secular, I unquote. Since 2014, we in JKLU are honoring internationally acclaimed outstanding achievers with JKLU Laureate Award each year, not only to venerate these accomplished leaders from all walks of life, but also to facilitate the young minds in our country to identify their role models and emulate them. In the last four years, JKLU Laureate Award were conferred upon renowned space scientist Dr. Kasturi Rangan in 2014, renowned economist and thought leader of Indian origin, Pandit Bhibhushan, Sri Lord, Lord, Professor Lord Meghnath Mag Desai in 2015, Nobel Peace Laureate from India, Sri Kailash Satyarthi in 2016, and internationally acclaimed management guru speaker and writer Professor Ram Charan last year. We are indeed delighted to confer the fifth JKLU Laureate Award this year on Pand Bhushan Sri Pranam Mukherjee in, in his exemplary service in the domain of public service, governance, and national building. We truly, we truly feel honored to confer this award on you, sir. Sri Haisinga Singhani a memorial oration that shall follow is an annual lecture series in the fond memory of our illustrious founder, Chancellor, and my elder brother, Sri Haishankar Singhania, to catalyze the youth of our country in understanding the nuances of great achievement and learn from leaders themselves. Padma Sri Padma Bhushan, Sri Haishankar Singhania, was highly respected industrial front runner throughout his lifetime, as well as a spot on personification of achievement of human spirit in many walks of life. As a prime mover of JK organization, he served our industrial conglomerate as his president for more than three decades till he left us for his heavenly abode in 2013. Amongst his many achievements, he was the president of International Chamber of Commerce headquartered in Paris for two successive terms. Almost only a few few Indians have achieved this position. He was also honored by the King of Sweden with highest Swedish award, Royal or Order of the Polar Star, for contribution to development of Indo-Swedish business relations. He was chairman of the Board of Governors of IIM Lucknow for a term spanning 15 years and was main, main architect in building it to the level of the top four leading management schools in the country. As a tribute to this extraordinary vision, and his towering personality, JKLU feels proud to have initiated the annual lecture series. The topic of today, today's lecture, Youth and Nation Building, is highly relevant in Indian context. Youth in India are contributing to Indian economy significantly by adopting innovation and choosing entrepreneurship as their career. In 1969, as a young man, Sri Pranam Mukherjee started his journey for nation building and never looked back. None other than you, sir, could be, therefore be better justice to such a relevant and significant important topic of this occasion. Sir, JK organization with more than 125 five years of reputed and diversified corporate and social presence is deeply committed to excellence. The group is driven by mission to serve the society with integrity, fairness, and trust. With a strong focus on research for more than seven decades, the group has significantly contributed and set up institutes in the early 40s 
such as JK Institute of Applied Physics and Technology in Allahabad University and JK Institute of Social and Human Relations in Lucknow University. We have set up chairs and endowments in many IITs. We have also set up our own nationally recognized research institute in tire and elastomer technology and paper and also research activities in agriculture products and many others. Continuing the legacy of JK, uh, JK Lakshminpath University was established in 2011 with a vision of to provide value-based quality higher education with a view to make one of the most innovative institutes of higher learning and research and its chosen field, the university is engaged itself with leading institutions in the world to further its academic and research agenda. JKLU has received, been receiving awards and accolades in a short span from various stakeholders. Recently, the university was awarded Pride of Rajasthan Award under outstanding contribution in the cause of education category by World Education Congress and ABP News. Besides grooming good quality employable youth for nation building, the university is focused on, on, on orienting young minds to a community service while pursuing excellence in what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, as I once again welcome you all on this occasion, I request you to be enduring friend of JKLU. Please feel free to share with us any thought or suggestions in making JKLU an edifice of learning. Now, as I conclude, dear youth of our great nation, I urge you to listen to the words of wisdom of Sri Pranam Mukherjee on the youth and nation building. Relate his, this, his message with his life and work and see what and how you can contribute to make our nation proud of the youth power. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we feel honored and take pride in presenting the fifth JKLU Laureate Award to Sri Pranab Mukherjee. I request our member of the Board of Management, Sri Surendra Malhotra, to read out the citation before the award presentation ceremony. JKLU Laureate Award presented to Honorable Sri Pranab Mukherjee in recognition of his exceptional achievement and inspiring leadership in the domain of public service, governance, and nation building. Born in a village of Birbhum district of West Bengal, in the family of a freedom fighter, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, a man of humble origins, has attained exemplary milestones while serving the nation in over five decades of public life. A master strategist and visionary, Sri Pranab Mukherjee has served at different times as foreign defense, commerce, and finance minister. And he attained the pinnacle of achievement by becoming the president of India between 2012 and 2017. Sri Mukherjee was conferred with the Padma Vibhushan in 2008. He was rated as one of the best five finance ministers of the world in 1984 by Euro Money Journal New York and was declared finance minister of the year for Asia in 2010 by Emerging Markets, a journal of record for World Bank and IMF. A prolific writer and a professor at heart, Sri Mukherjee has authored several books on Indian economy and nation building and has been a strong crusader for education for development of the country. His contributions and achievements are great source of motivation and guidance for the young minds who will be catalyzed to explore the limits of excellence in thought and action, and in doing so, create new sagas of self-belief and inspiration. Chairman, Board of Management, Jaipur, 3rd October 2018. 
Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived, and I now request our Honorable Chancellor, Shri Bharat Hariji Singhania, to present the fifth JKLU Laureate Award to Honorable Shri Pranab Mukherjee. The JKLU fraternity owes it all to our founder chancellor, late Sri Hari Shankarji Singhania. As a tribute to his unparalleled contributions, I would request the dignitaries on the dais and the audience to join us in having a glimpse of Sri Hari Shankarji Singhania's journey towards excellence. कदाचर मां कर्म फल हेतु भूर्मा ती संगोष्ट व कर्मणी यू ओनली हैव द राइट टू डू योर ड्यूटीज यू डू नॉट हैव एनी कंट्रोल ऑन द रिजल्ट लीव योर इनर्शिया डू योर ड्यूटी लीव द रिजल्ट इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द ऑलमाइटी एक्ट लाइक अ कर्म योगी A man of true conviction, Sri Hari Shankar Singhania, created his own destiny. He was a true pioneer, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and a visionary par excellence. He was greatly influenced in his formative years by his illustrious father, Lala Lakshmi Pat Singhania, and his two uncles, Sri Padam Pat Singhania and Sri Kailas Pat Singhania, and embodied their spirit of duty. Thus, coming to be a karma yogi industrialist in his own right. Fifteenth August, nineteen forty-seven, was not only an important day in Indian history, but it also marked the birth of a future industrialist. It was on this day that a young lad of fourteen found his way in the visitors' gallery of the Parliament by innovative means. Even at this tender age, he had the confidence to overcome obstacles in his way. He never looked back thereafter. Suffer में मुश्किलें आएं तो जुरत और बढ़ती है। कोई जब रास्ता रोके तो हिम्मत और बढ़ती है। Hari Shankar Singhania had contributed immensely to the growth of industrialization and was recognized with equal sincerity. However, his journey to success was not easy. Although he had his father's support, he was taught to face challenges and take tough decisions from early on. He started his first project not in the comforts of a lavish, well-furnished office, but in the backwaters of West Bengal and the jungles of Orissa. Working in tough conditions, he tasted success the hard way, and it was only after he had been groomed, trained, and tested. that he joined the board of directors of the jk organization in the year 1970 hari shankar singhania reached his first peak where he was elected to head fiki the premier chamber of indian business in 1993-94 he became the president of the international chamber of commerce paris the leader of global business He was the second Indian and third Asian to receive such an honor. His dedication to his work and contribution to the progress of the industry brought him prestigious Indian and international recognition. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2003 by the President of India and was also felicitated with the Royal Order of the Polar Star by the King of Sweden, one of the highest honors bestowed on a civilian. 
Hari Shankar Singhania was an institution by himself. He not only started new businesses such as JK Tire, Lakshmi Cement and many others, but was also the mastermind behind the takeover in the CPM of the paper industry. Vikrant in the tire industry and Fena, a multinational household brand for rubber belts and polymer products. He also inspired the group to acquire Tornel Tires in Mexico throughout his life and working tenure. Hari Shankar Singhania followed a value system that was old school yet evolved with time. He embraced change with open arms. From license raj to free economy, IT revolution and globalization, he easily adopted the paradigm shift of doing business. From a stellar achievement at a ripe age to a grounded judgment in his later years, Hari Shankar Singhania created a name for himself and his companies. But more than that, he groomed others to carry forward the tradition. तमाम उम्र लड़ाई लड़ी उसूलों की जो जी सको तो जियो जिंदगी रसूलों की बिहाइंड द इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट वाज अ मैन विद अ वेरी सॉफ्ट हार्ट ही रिगार्डेड हिज एम्प्लॉइज एज फैमिली एंड वुड बी डीपली मूव्ड ऑन सीइंग देम इन एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ डिस्कंफर्ट हिज डायनामिज्म एंड स्ट्रांग पर्सोना कंटिन्यूज टू बी एन इंस्पिरेशन फॉर वन एंड ऑल For he always said, people are not pulled from the front or pushed from behind. They are driven from within. Hazaron saal nargis apni beenuri pe roti hai. Badi muddat se hota hai chaman mein didaaye var paida. Hari Shankar Singhania, 20 June 1933 to 22 February 2013. thank you ladies and gentlemen with this we come to the most awaited part of the ceremony the fifth hari shankar singhania memorial oration and for delivering it ladies and gentlemen may i please invite shri pranab mukherjee चांसलर जे के लक्ष्मीपथ यूनिवर्सिटी श्री आर पी सिंघानिया प्रो चांसलर जे के एल यू डॉक्टर आर एल रायना वाइस चांसलर जे के आल यू श्री आशुतोष गुप्ता प्रो वाइस चांसलर distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen dear students at the outset i would like to express my deep appreciation for being chosen to be honored as by lakshma <coughs> Lakshmi Path University today i deeply appreciate this sentiment and pray to be worthy of the honor conferred on me <laughs> distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen it's always of an occasion like this makes one humble because we do not know whether we really fit to be honored or to receive 
this distinction but as a distinguished selector choose me i respect their judgment and bow to their decision and offer it accept this offer for the people for which i am striving to work throughout my life till day whether in office or out of it distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen i am delighted today to share with the young minds of our present my thoughts on the topic of the youth and the nation building demographically india is one of the youngest nations in the whole world currently though it is the land of the oldest civilization of the world more than 5000 years old with a population age of 27.3 years we are among the handful of the south asian countries sitting on a demographic gold mine nearly 65% of our population is under the age of 35 years and nearly 50% of them are at the age of 25 years these statistics make it appreciative for us to focus on the educational needs of our younger generation we must recognize that the demographic dividend can only be reaped if the young population is provided a required education and training to make them conscious citizens and vocationalize their skills to make them productive members of the workforce once mahatma gandhi of that and i strongly believe youth is the life and salt of our nation and so distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen i always believe youth is an age where your actions opinions knowledge and experiences are going to shape your ideas and reflect in shaping the nation's future it means that you are at the forefront of the unprecedented age that india has it means that now more than ever you must harness your potential and motivate yourselves to contribute to nation building in this task the entire socio economic political ecosystem has to take the responsibility of carefully nurturing ensuring employability and being a facilitator otherwise i am afraid instead of paying it as democratic dividend it may cost
transition from dependency to adulthood, from carelessness to awareness, from reliance to responsibility. The role of this envisaged for you has been beautifully defined by Swami Vivekananda many years ago. And I quote a few lines. I quote, Youth means to place your firm confidence in yourself and exercise your hopeful determination and resolution and willing good intentions in the beautiful path of self culture. This will truly bring supreme satisfaction and fulfillment not only to you but also to all concerned." Unquote. At this age, I feel I have a state of mind that has temperamental predominance of courage over timidity, hope over despair, and resilience over surrender. Nobody grows old merely by a number of years. We grow old by shaping our values and ideas. I would therefore expect younger people like you to keep your mind open to new perspectives and new motivative ideas. A closed mind is as good as a damned mind. Distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, I stated earlier, and I want to quote it, young people of India will build a strong and powerful nation, a nation that is politically mature, economically strong, a nation whose people enjoy both a high quality of life as well as justice. In this context, I would now like to elaborate. What do we mean by nation? How we define nation? And what is the task of building our nation? As I recollect the modern concept of nation state, as it was evolved in Europe, and which has been modeled by many of the states and countries in Europe, America, Latin America, Africa. The nation was defined in an extremely rigid sense. A specific territory inhabited by a group of people sharing a common language, not only having a religious bond, and also identifying a common adversary. Can we consider India as a nation from that standpoint, on the basis of which European nation states have evolved since the treaties of Westphalia in 1648, I'm afraid. We cannot. When I shut my eyes and think of India, it comes to my mind. A vast conglomeration of people about 1.3 billion inhabiting a landmass of 3.3 million square kilometers using in their daily lives 120 languages, more than 1,600 dialects, practicing seven religions in their everyday life 
having different way of life but yet bound by one constitution one law one system one idea and that idea It is not a nation which can identify a common enemy or adversary, because for five thousand years, over millennia, we have taught, "Bosu thei bo kudum bakam." Whole world is my relation. Yatla vishavave te ko niram. Whole world. may have its nests here and our objective has been sarve sukhina bhavantu sarve santu niravao it encompasses all it is totally inclusive not exclusive that is the concept of india which i do feel which have sustained that pandit jawarlal nehru in his discovery of india while talking of india is saying no doubt it is a bundle of contradictory ideas sometimes it appears to be a meet to an idea but it is very real existing and pervasive here lies the mortality of india it cannot be defined in the narrow concept of a nation state identifying with a specific territory with a specific group of people with a specific religion or with a common enemy therefore this is a gigantic task to build our nations it's a gigantic task as i started my observations by saying india is a great nation not in the narrow sense of nationhood we always believe man is above all we have not learned this lessons from the chapter 7 of the united nations charter many years ago almost 600 years ago a village poet of bengal uttered the final words of humanity man is above everything nothing is above man suno ho manush bhai sabar upore manush satto tahar upore nai man is above everything nothing is above man this broad humanity is to be inculcated india is not a nation in the narrow sense it can never be defined with a narrow definition of modern concept of nation state it is a great civilization which embraces all kinds of races humanities languages in the language of rabindranath tagore which he wrote even before he got the nobel prize that is before 1913 nobody knows at whose call streams of people came from all direction mingled with each other as the rivers mingle and finally emerged 
into an integral part of the vast ocean. Indian nation has developed from this concept which has accepted, accepted everything, which has accepted everyone, which has absorbed all, and which has not rejected anything. So we cannot say somebody or someone is our enemy for 5,000 years. We taught the people of the whole world. Sarve shukina bhavantu. Therefore, the task of the modern youth to build the new India in the context of today's concept. Yes, we have prepared nuclear weapons. We have exploded. geothermic tests underground, not once but twice, Pokhran 1, Pokhran 2. But immediately after the tests in Pokhran 2, the then Prime Minister, Mr. Atoll Bihari Bajwai, for the first time declared amongst the atomic powers of the world, nuclear doctrine. And the first sentence of that doctrine is, India will never use nuclear weapons against non-nuclear states. Second commitment India made, nobody asked. There was no threat. There might have been threat of sanctions which we did not take into account in 1974, nor in 1998, when we conducted the successive tests, because we knew we want to pursue this technology, we want to acquire this knowledge with the immediate achievement of independence, India is one of the countries which established Atomic Energy Commission under famous scientist Bhava. Therefore, it is not accidental that India would be the sixth member of the exclusive club of nuclear power in the world. But this power is not for des destruction but for construction, not for war, but for ensuring peace. And that's why uncalled for, undemanded of, we declared ourselves voluntarily, this is our doctrine and which has been universally active. In this context, what I want to emphasize upon particularly to our young minds, young friends. Whenever I come in such a congregation, I do not know what my listeners get benefit from me, what they learn from me. But I get a lot of energy from the blooming eyes, from the luminous faces of the youngsters who look forward to the future with confidence and they believe that the world belongs to them and they share their belief and encourage them. Go ahead. world belongs to you. It is waiting for you to conquer the world, to be the master of the world. Don't carry on any baggage. This is the best way to build up your nation. But not being constrained by the narrow-mindedness of my nation, right or wrong. 
We have always accepted. We may make mistake. Leaders may make may, may mistake. But it is the responsibility and job of the people to correct the leader. Therefore, I am narrating an incident to you which speak of the essence of Indian civilization, Indian philosophy, and our narration of nation building. This story relates to the happening of the Second World War. Before the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, Rabindranath visited Europe. There is a beautiful statue of the Tagore to reflect his mood at that moment of time, where he was extremely langui anguished, deeply thinking, bending his head. The statue is erected at Lake Ballantyne in Sweden. That is the time when fascism and Nazism was at its worst in displaying its ugly face. World-renowned scientist Einstein had to leave his motherland almost penniless because he was a Jew. Nobel laureate author Thomas Mann his books were burnt on the streets of Berlin because he was a Jew. Tagore wrote to his many friends in Europe, expressing his anguishness, sadness, what is happening to the world. Many people replied in their own ways. One reply which assured him, and that reply was, Tagore, we understand your sensitive mind. We understand the anguishness of that sensitive mind. But please do not forget the fundamental truth of the advance of human civilization. Courses of human civilization have never been decided by sword, by the conquerors, by Notamorlin or Chinggis Khan. Courses of civilization have been decided by Christ, Buddha, Prophet. Course of contemporary history will never be decided either by the brown shirts of Hitler or by the black shirts of Mussolini, but by a person who has no shirt and he lives in your country. His name is Mahatma Gandhi. And it was adequate to assure Tagore. And after a few years, I think after two years he died. The message is quite clear. Our contribution, yes, we want to be economically advanced, scientifically advanced, but at the same time want to carry people with us. We believe in the development of togetherness. We believe we cannot advance ourselves if we keep a large chunk of humanity behind us to drag me behind. We believe to move ahead with togetherness, to march forward togetherness, not excluding anybody, but including everybody. We are broad enough to accommodate all views all ideas, all concepts, because we have that capacity to absorb them, to adopt them, 
to assimilate them and to synthesize a new product out of them. That is the message of Indian civilization. That is the message of the new nation making which our founding father starting from Mahatma Gandhi, Rabindranath Tagore, Aurobind, and many others they have taught us. I would conclude my observation. Dear young, young friends, surely you will have, after graduating from this institution, when you enter into your real life, you will find little nervousness. It is quite natural. Because there will be no fostering care of your guides, teachers, or your guardians. You will have to be on your own. But always remember, the knowledge which you have acquired, the skill which has been instilled in you, the courage and confidence, which have been injected in you will help you to guide you and to move ahead without carrying any baggage of the past confidently. As I said earlier, I repeat in my conclusion, the world belongs to you and it is for you to take it, to create a new world for yourself for ourselves, for the humanity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir, for such a highly inspirational address that even rain gods could not resist themselves from applauding. Let's hear it for Shri Pranam Mukherjee. <laughs> Sir, the path shown by you today to all of us will go a long way in building this great nation. Thank you once again. May I now invite Dr. R.P. Singhania, Honorable Pro Chancellor JKLU to propose the vote of thanks. Honorable former President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Chancellor of the University, Sri Bharatari Singhania, fellow members of the Board of Management, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of J.K. Lakshmi Prat University, Jaipur, and on my own on this important occasion. It is indeed an honor to thank Sri Pranam Mukherjee, who has received many accolades and honors in his long, illustrious career. As an astute parliamentarian in public service, governance, and nation building, going up to the apex position of the Honorable President of India. For our university, there could not have been a bigger pleasure than to honor a distinguished professor, writer, and a thought leader who continues to be closely attached with higher education for the youth of the country. We are really thankful to you, sir, for having accepted our humble recognition. Your address of Harishankar Singhania Memorial Oration is indeed an inspiration for the large number of youth who are present here and elsewhere. It is a great motivator to the young to achieve the best to the capability and set a higher benchmark for themselves. To my mind, it's a beck and call to our youth to build a nation which we can be proud of and which, can, which we can take forward as a leading nation of the world. I would like to thank you all for being here today on behalf of the university and on my own and for having spared your time 
to attend this function. This function, as you know, has found its place in the calendar events of the pink city of the country. JKLU should endeavor to bring to you more luminaries in the years to come as it strives for excellence in the field of world-class education, research, and consultancy at higher levels. My special thanks to media for their encouragement to JKLU in its endeavors. I would also like to thank the faculty and the staff of JKLU for their efforts in organizing this event. Once again, on behalf of my own and my, on behalf of J.K. Lakshmi University, I'd like to thank Sri Pranam Mukherjee for accepting the Laureate Award and delivering a brilliant oration. Heavens are blessing the great son of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee. May I, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, request you to give a standing ovation for the brilliant speech. Thank you. Go ahead. I now call upon all to rise for the national anthem. Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Uttala, Vanga, Hindya, Himachala, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchala, Jaladhi, Taranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Aashish, Mange, Gahe, Tava, Jaya, Gaga, Janagana Mangana Dayaka Jaya He Bharata Bhagya Vibhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you very much. Please take your seats. Our chief guest will now leave the hall audience are requested to remain seated till the dignitaries leave. I request the audience to remain seated till the dignitaries leave. 